identification and classification of microorganisms. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to explain the various methods of identification of microorganisms and explain the classification of various microorganisms in our biosphere. Introduction to Identification and Classification of Microorganisms Living organisms are enthralled by their multifariousness, whether they are plants, animals, or microbes. A spatter of soil is colonized with more than the human population on Earth. They execute a fundamental part of nature. So, if we organize these microbes in echelons, based on their similarity or differences in any characteristics, we can easily contemplate various microorganisms, their functions, solve the problems caused by microbes, capitalize their competence and their metabolism, use to prevent or treat diseases, and develop new technologies and enhance the quality of life. So, in this lesson, we will learn about the various methods of identification of microorganisms and classification of various microorganisms in our biosphere. Techniques for identifying the taxonomical characters of microorganisms. In order to identify various microorganisms, we need to classify and define various microorganisms. The two ways to determine the taxonomical characters are classical approach and molecular approach. The classical approach is used to study morphological, biochemical, physiological, ecological, and genetic characteristics in microbial taxonomy. And the molecular approach is the most potent tool to study taxonomy. This is done by analyzing nucleic acid composition, nucleic acid hybridization, and nucleic acid sequencing, comparing amino acid sequences. We will next study the eight kingdom classification system of the living organisms by Cavalier-Smith. Divisions of life Presently, the eight kingdom classification system of the living organisms by Thomas Cavalier Smith has been adopted. This is based on additional division of the protists using rRNA dossier and categorizing organisms into eukaryota and bacteria, which is further classified into eight kingdoms, namely eubacteria, archaebacteria, archaezoa, protozoa, chromista, plantae, fungi, and Animalia. The eight kingdoms are again classified based on molecular chronometers, phylogenetic tree, parsimony analysis, oligonucleotide signature sequences, polyphasic taxonomy, and numerical taxonomy. We will next study the characteristics of the eight kingdoms sequentially. First, Kingdom Archaea is delineated as the group of extremophiles that are either single cellular or filamentous or aggregates. Next, they can stain either gram positive or gram negative. They may be spherical, rod shaped, spiral, or pleomorphic. And they replicate either by binary fission or fragmentation. Their cell walls are composed of various polysaccharides, pseudomurin, and proteins. Methanobacterium have walls containing pseudomurin, a peptidoglycan-like polymer that has L-amino acids in its crosslinks, N-acetyltalo-saminuronic acid, and beta-1,3-glycosidic bonds. Some of the features of this kingdom are displayed on the screen. And some of the ecological important characteristics are displayed on the screen. Eubacteria are classified under Kingdom Monera. They are true bacteria and are characterized by the presence of a rigid cell wall and a flagellum. Cyanobacteria, also called the blue-green algae, 
have chlorophyll and they are photosynthetic autotrophs. They are unicellular, colonial or filamentous, freshwater or marine or terrestrial in habitat and their colonies are surrounded by a gelatinous shape. Aquatic nitrogen fixing bacteria, nostoc and anavena fix the atmospheric nitrogen in their heterocyst. They get their bluish pigmentation from phyllocyanin, which are used to absorb light for photosynthesis. And some of the features of this kingdom are displayed on the screen. Next, we will look into kingdom protista. This kingdom includes chrysophytes, dinoflagellates, euglenoids, slime molds, and protozoans. And some of their features are displayed on the screen. Next, chrysophytes are classified under Kingdom Protista. They include diatoms and desmids. They are microscopic photosynthetic organisms that inhabit the aquatic environment. And some of their features are displayed on the screen. Further, dinoflagellates are classified under Kingdom Protista. They are marine and photosynthetic organisms with different colored pigments in their cells. Their cell wall has an outer layer of cellulose. And some of their features are displayed on the screen. Also, euglenoids are classified under Kingdom Protista. They are freshwater organisms. They lack a cell wall and have a rich layer of the pellicle, which accounts for their flexibility and some of their features are displayed on the screen. Next, slime molds are classified under Kingdom Protista. They are saprophytic protists that feed on organic material. Under suitable conditions, they form aggregation called plasmodium. And some of their features are displayed on the screen. We will next look into subkingdom protozoa. They are classified as amoeboid protozoans, flagellated protozoans, ciliated protozoans and sporozoans. And some of their features are displayed on the screen. Further, kingdom fungi exist as saprophytes as well as a parasite. They can also live as symbionts in association with algae as lichens and with a green plant as mycorrhiza. Asexual reproduction is by spores called conidia or sporangiospores or zoospores. However, the sexual reproduction occurs by oospores, ascospores and basidiospores. And some of the features are displayed on the screen. Phycomycetes are classified under Kingdom Fungi. They are obligate parasites. The mycelium is aseptate and xenocytic. The asexual reproduction occurs by motile zoospores or by non-motile aplanospores. And some of their features are displayed on the screen. Ascomycetes are called sac fungi. They are multicellular like the penicillium or unicellular like saccharomyces. They may be saprophytic, decomposers, parasitic or coprophilus. And some of their features are displayed on the screen. Basidiomycetes are classified under the kingdom fungi. They include bracket fungi or puffballs. The mycelium is branched and septate. The vegetative reproduction is by fragmentation. The plasmogamy is by fusion of two vegetative or somatic cells of different strains or genotypes. Some of their important features are displayed on the screen. Deutromycetes are classified under Kingdom Fungi. They reproduce by asexual spores called the conidia. Some of their important features are displayed on the screen. And, virus is an infectious particle that reproduces by hijacking a host cell, using its machinery to make more progeny. Some of its characteristics are, 
they are DNA or RNA genome inside a protein shell called capsid and an external membrane envelope. They are very diverse and have different kinds of genomes and infect different hosts. And they produce by infecting their host cells and reprogram them to become virus making factories. Conclusion Microorganisms like bacteria, protozoa, parasites, viruses, and fungi can be found in almost every natural element on the planet. Though they may be invisible to the human naked eye, they influence the way we encounter life in a myriad of ways. Summary In this lesson, you have learned that classical approach is used to study morphological, biochemical, physiological, ecological, and genetic characteristics in microbial taxonomy. And the molecular approach is done by analyzing nucleic acid composition, nucleic acid hybridization, and nucleic acid sequencing. And living organisms are classified based on additional division of the protists using rRNA dossier and categorizing organisms as eukaryota and bacteria which is further classified as eubacteria, archaebacteria, archaezoa, protozoa, chromista, fungi, and virus.